Hi there and welcome to chapter 4.3 from Scott Stevens' Introduction to Statistics, the Think and Do book. In this chapter we continue to calculate probabilities and specifically here we introduce the addition rule. And let me get into full screen mode and we'll get into some details. So in this, in this section, the addition rule, we're looking to calculate the probability of one event or another. That or is very important. If you see the word or, uh, you're going to be adding, probably, you're going to be using the addition rule. Um, so before we even do the addition rule, because it's really just uh, the classical approach to probability, we're going to try to answer these two questions involving the word or, right? So suppose I have one card drawn from a deck. I'm going to draw one card. What is the probability that it is a king or a queen? Well, if you look at that, there are um, four kings. There are four queens. So there's a total of eight successes, king or queen, right? And there's 52 cards, so the probability is 8 out of 52, which is 0.154. That's without using any rule or formula, right? We just counted things up. The second example is a little trickier. Find the probability that it is a king or a heart, right? And notice the word or. So there's going to be some sort of addition going on here. All right, so here's the idea. So if you look at kings, there are four of these. And then if you look at hearts, let me get the heart. There are 13. All right, but the problem is one of these hearts is a king. So I don't want to count that king of hearts twice. So if you add these two, you get 17. But that's not the correct number of successes because you've counted that king of hearts twice. So the actual number of successes is 16. Total of 52 cards. So it's 0 0.308. Right. So that's sort of where we're going with this, and we were able to do it without any rule or any formula, right? So the, the addition rule is really about not counting things twice, as in this second example. But here's the uh, official formula, the official way to calculate probabilities involving the word or, right? So we started off with some notation, a compound event is any event combining two or more simple events, right, such as getting a king or a queen. All right, the, the simple event is getting a king. If you're counting king or a queen, you've got a compound event. And then we talk about, and this, this formula depends on whether or not these events can occur simultaneously. And so we have a name for that. Two events, A and B, are mutually exclusive. The other word for that is disjoint if they cannot occur simultaneously. So if you look at example one, what's the probability of getting a king or a queen? Those events, getting a king, getting a queen, they are mutually exclusive because you can't pick a card that is a king and a queen. No such thing exists, right? Um, in example one B, the second one there, the two events are not mutually exclusive, right? Because in that problem we ask what's the probability of getting a king or a heart but you can actually get a card that is both king and heart right so those events getting a king getting a heart are not mutually exclusive so here's the formula the formal addition rule the probability of a or b is the sum of the two individual probabilities minus the probability of both right and this one's always valid. And if A and B are mutually exclusive, then it gets a little simpler. If they're mutually exclusive, you just add the two probabilities. The probability of A plus the probability of B. You don't have to worry about the A and B. And the reason these two formulas are, va are, are valid is that if, if A and B are mutually exclusive, this thing equals zero. So that's why it's not in the second form. But listen, if you if you need if, if you can only remember one of these, remember the first, because that one's always valid. Right? 
Okay, the informal addition rule looks like this. When calculating the probability of A or B, don't count anything twice. That's really what this formula says. And this is the don't count anything twice part. Right? Because if you add these two probabilities, you might have counted something twice. And this sort of gets rid of that. Right? Okay. Uh, next page. So now if we use the addition rule on our first two examples that we did there, um, hopefully we get the same answers, right? What's the probability you're going to draw one card? What's the probability there's a king or a queen? Well, since these events are mutually exclusive, you just add up the two probabilities. Probability of a king is right there. Probability of a queen is right there. 4 out of 52 plus 4 out of 52 is 8 out of 52. 0.154. Now, what if we ask the question, what's the probability of getting a king or a heart? These events are not mutually exclusive. So I add up the probability of getting a king plus the probability of getting a heart. There's 13 of those. But now I have to subtract off the probability of getting a king and a heart, right? But there's only one of those. It's the king of hearts. So the probability of getting a king and a heart is 1 out of 52. So notice... I have 4 out of 52 plus 13 out of 52, which gives me 17 out of 52, but I've counted the king of hearts twice, so I subtract off 1 out of 52 to get 16 out of 52 like we did on the last page, 0.30. All right. All right, so we can do this for sort of larger collections of objects, and so we'll, we'll, um, we'll look at this at, at these tables, these contingency tables. And suppose we have... 2,400 students in a small, private New England college, right? Um, here's, here's the sort of breakdown. You break down these by uh, the students by, ma by gender, male or female, and by class standing, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, and graduate students, right? That's a contingency table. It tells us a little bit of something about the um, demographics of this particular college. And so we're going to ask some questions regarding probabilities that tell us a little something about the college. You know, if you, if you select one, if one student is randomly selected, what is the probability of selecting a male or a freshman? So as soon as you see that, what you should see is the word or, right? So we know we're going to be using the addition rule. Um, and if you look at male and freshman, those are not mutually exclusive, right? Because you can have... Um, a student who is a male and a freshman. So we're going to take the probability of male, add it to the probability of selecting a freshman, and subtracting off the probability of a male and a freshman. So if you look at the probability of male, that's 1,040 out of 2,400. The probability of a freshman, that's all these, 575 out of 2400 but if you just added those two you would have counted these male freshmen twice all right so what we do is we subtract off the probability of a male of selecting a male freshman which is 255 out of 2400 so you add all those up you get 1360 out of 2400.567 and listen you could have gotten that same exact 1360 without out of 2400 without um, a formal rule basically you would just have added these 1040 males and then just added on the 320 freshmen who are not males so you don't want to count the 255 here twice and it's to get 1360 so again the informal version of the addition rule is just to not count anything twice uh, the your turn problem was the probability of getting a female or a senior. Um, again, we've got a, a situation here where the, where the events are not mutually exclusive. So we have to take the probability of a female plus the probability of selecting a senior minus the probability of selecting a female senior. All right, so let me erase these. So we start off probability of a female is 1360 out of 2400 
probability of a senior is 425 out of 2400. But in that case, we actually count it. If we, if we added both these numbers up, we'd be counting this group twice. All right, so we have to subtract off the probability of a female senior. And you get 1525 over 2400.635. Right. Again, it's just a matter of not counting things twice. You could have added up um, these 1360 females and then just added the 165 seniors that are not females and you'd get that same answer. All right, so what else do we have here? A junior or a senior. Well, these are mutually exclusive, so I'm just going to add up the probability of the junior plus the probability of a senior, and I don't have to worry about the overlap because these events are disjoint or mutually exclusive. You can't be a junior and a senior. So if you look up your juniors, 475, seniors, 425. We have 475 out of 2400 plus 425 out of 2400 is 900 out of 2400. 0.375. And again, when the events are mutually exclusive, you don't have to worry about counting things twice. Okay, so that wraps up chapter 4.3. Uh, we'll, we'll see you again in 4.4. .4.